The Weekly starts now. During the pandemic, some folks decided to learn a foreign language. Others might have learned how to play a musical instrument. And still others might have learned how to bake sourdough bread. Me, during the pandemic, I decided to encapsulate a crawl space. So why the crawl space instead of those other fun things? The crawl space was an afterthought when we first moved in here until one day I peeked inside and saw black spots, mold, the black plague. So I crawled in the crawl space with a bucket of bleach and a scrub brush and threw in a dehumidifier and then started looking around to see how much it would cost to encapsulate the crawl space. The cost would be at least two or three thousand dollars, which I didn't have thanks to my daughter's college tuition payments. So I did some research. My crawl space is above grade and I didn't have standing water, so I didn't need to install a sump pump. But where was that humidity coming from? The space is not vented, so there was no humidity coming inside from the outdoors. Well, it was coming from the moisture in the ground, which would escape into the crawl space and create the conditions that would lead to the growth of mold. I learned through one of our pro builder stories that even an Arizona home builder, if he's constructing a crawl space or a closed in space above the desert floor, he's going to have to account for moisture content, as little as it is, in that soil accumulating in the space above and figure out a way to prevent the possibility of mold growth. So between more research and being a cheapskate, I decided to give this project a shot. Besides, stories about crawl spaces and mold are the most read topics on ProBuilder.com, so I figured my encapsulation journey would make for a good video on the weekly. Phase one, remove the existing insulation. Fiberglass bed insulation in a damp area like the crawl space is a no-no. Organic material like craft paper backing is food for mold. So I removed all the bad insulation and replaced the spaces between the two by fours and behind the rim board with two inch thick R10 rigid foam board. Then I sealed the edges with cans of spray foam. I did consider trying a DIY spray foam kit rather than buying all those sheets of rigid foam board, but those kits cost three times more than the foam board did. And as I would be applying foam with a spray wand while lying on my side, I thought I wouldn't be able to move fast enough to keep the spray nozzle from clogging. And I'd just make a big mess. Three pieces of advice. Use a long blade insulating knife. It's way better for cutting thick foam board than a utility knife or a tooth handsaw. Cut your foam board outside the crawl space so you can bring in all the pieces you need and they're ready to be wedged into place. And finally, wear a cap or something on your head. I found out the hard way after some of that expanding foam from the spray can split it out of my head that most of that stuff could only be removed by pulling out my hair. Through the magic of cheap animation, here's a simple floor plan for the project with the approximate dimensions. My next move is to cut strips of 20 mil thick polyethylene liner and attach the strips to the concrete footing all along the perimeter where groundwater can enter from the outside through capillary action. If it does, I want the water to stay under those heavyweight plastic strips and the floor insulation and the floor membrane that will go on top of that. So I found a supply house online and ordered the liner, Christmas tree fasteners, cap stakes and seam tape for the liner, and landscape staples, also called sod stakes from a big box retailer. The concrete footing is about four inches high. I sealed the gap between the footing and the sill plate as that is a source of air intrusion. I can only come up to the top of the concrete footing with the liner because building code requires that I leave the wood sill plate open and visible for termite inspection. The first sign of an infestation probably would occur on the lumber closest to the ground. Before fastening the liner, I apply polyurethane caulking on the footing to create a seal. So due to my budget and the tight space available below some of the duct work, I picked one inch thick R4 foam board. I cut the 4x8 sheets into 2x8 pieces so I could slip them in the crawl space opening. Then I will stake down about 24 pieces along the entire floor. I secured the four corners of each sheet with stakes and secured the middle of each sheet with a couple of stakes as well.
This image is not a finished look. I did get these spaces between the sheets tighter, but where there were gaps, I would fill them in with a can of spray foam. And finally, I'll cut three rolls of six feet wide sheets to about 26 feet long, so I'll have enough material to cover the footings on both ends. I'll fasten my first two pieces on the sides, and then I'll leave about four feet of floor exposed, so I'll have about one foot of overlap on both sides of the middle piece, which I'll put in last. Before securing the liner with Christmas tree fasteners, I'm going to apply a bead of polyurethane caulking on the concrete footing again to create a seal. I used more than 100 fasteners on this project and spaced them out about 16 inches apart. This fastener is one of a dozen or so that I had on hand, so I used them. It's bigger with a 5 8 inch pin. The smaller ones shown on this video have a quarter inch pin. All right, so I got my first piece rolled out. There's my second piece ready to go. It'll be on the other edge, and then I'll put the final one in the middle, overlap. But, uh... All right, I had to shorten the ductwork by an inch so I could lift it off the ground so I can uh, pull this through. So I got the roll edge down there in the dark and I'm just pulling the edge edge through so I can get it underneath all these guys. Okay, I got the third and final piece laid out, which wasn't too bad. I thought I had to do a lot more pushing and tugging, but uh, the membrane slid right underneath the uh, ductwork without too much trouble. So I got it all the way down there at the, uh, I guess that's the beginning. That's where the entryway is. So I got this much overlap. So I'm gonna caulk here. I'll caulk the edge, uh, but uh, as I do that, I'll also secure this end over here, so then I'll go down there and just pull out some more of the wrinkles. But uh, third piece is in. We're almost there. All right, so now I'm going to work on the seams. So I will caulk the edge here, and I'll use these uh, cap stakes. I'll put some caulking on this side. Put these down on the uh, edge. Uh, I've got like 20 of these, so I'll just space them out so I can use them. And then I'm gonna tape the seams, this four inch wide tape. And uh, you're in the finish line. These caps, I'm gonna tape over them just to get a sure seal. Even though I did caulk underneath them, why not? I've got the tape. Well, I have to say, I like what I've done with the place. It's a clean, dry space we can actually store stuff down here and um, the heat uh, is going up to the space above that's the bedroom of the home office which now feels about as warm as the rest of the house and the humidity we used to have a dehumidifier in here and uh, that thing that tank is about a gallon and a half and it would fill it up a uh, halfway before I did all this and now after a few days of running it, after this was completed, I get maybe less than a pint of uh, water. The relative humidity reading on that uh, machine 
it used to be like somewhere between 50 and 65 percent before all this when it was just a dirt floor now it's about 30 percent i just needed to be below 50 so pretty happy with uh where this uh ended up um although two things i probably do have to think about is radon we'll get some uh radon detection gizmos in here and um if i do the radon uh i'll have somebody else do it <laughs> uh but they'll at least have a nice dry clean space to work in and uh, that's something I probably have to consider when I have the budget for it, whether it's going to be a passive system or something with a fan to be determined. And um, humidity, uh, st still hoping I don't need a dehumidifier. Uh, I'll probably have a humidistat in here just to get some peace of mind to see what the humidity is at all. And um, if you watch this video and can tear it apart, see, point out what I did wrong, please do so. Um, it's not really a how-to, it's kind of like how to learn. And uh, if you see something that uh, I was uh, remiss or forgot to do or uh, could have done better, just throw some comments in the video. But uh, this was my winter project. I figured uh, budget, spent less than 800 bucks on material. Time, probably spent, and I would say somewhere between 40 and 68 hours. Uh, most of the hours was taking out the old um, bat insulation, fiberglass insulation, and the prep work outside before I brought everything in here. But um, this is uh, hopefully one less spot in the house I have to worry about, at least with uh, moisture and, and heat loss. And this is what I did during my pandemic. Take care.